A train horn is a warning and signaling device that produces a loud sound to alert people of the train's movement. Train horns work by feeding air from the train's air supply. 125 to 140 pounds per square inch of compressed air enters through a line to the manifold, which leads to each chime. This air then enters the power chamber, causing metal diaphragms to vibrate. This oscillation creates waves of air which produces the sound that is then amplified as it travels down the horn's throat. Train horns are incredibly loud, up to 96 to 110 decibels, and can be heard from very long distances. For some, this warning device is nothing more than an obnoxious intrusion. For others, at a distance, this is the most soothing sound in the world. Ocean waves, the pattering of heavy rain, thunderstorms, forest ambience, and white noise. These are just some of the many sounds people have used to soothe their minds or to help them fall asleep. You can find hours upon hours of these sounds on YouTube and Spotify playlists, sometimes with accompanying visuals for a more immersive experience. The existence of these collections demonstrates a real demand for soothing noise in the modern world. I'm someone who has never had serious problems with sleep, it's something I'm grateful for, so the use of using ambient sounds to aid in falling asleep has always been a curiosity to me. I'm especially interested in the use of modern sounds for this purpose, the most famous probably being white noise. The first white noise machine may have been invented in 1667, when Pope Clement IX commissioned sculptor Bernini to build a machine to reduce his insomnia. The machine Bernini made used a wheel, which worked in conjunction with a series of paper globes to imitate the sound of flowing water when struck. The Marpak Dome is the first fan-based white noise machine and was made in 1962 and is still being made today. Mechanical white noise machines are sometimes considered better because they are closer to a perceived authentic randomness that digital loops can't replicate. True white noise contains all frequencies across the spectrum of audible sound in equal measure, which produces something that sounds like the static of a TV or radio. It's called white noise because of its analogy to light, which turns white when all the visible frequencies are summed up into a single beam. White noise is actually kind of grating, in my opinion, so if that doesn't suit your needs, you can always try pink noise. Pink noise is similar to white noise in that it contains the same overall intensity in each octave, but the volume of individual pitches decreases by 3 decibels with each higher octave. As a result, pink noise sounds lower pitched, so it's more similar to the sound of a waterfall than a radio. Brown noise, sometimes called red noise, gets its name from the type of random movement known as Brownian motion. Or red noise gets its name because it's loosely similar to how red light has a low frequency on the visible spectrum. Brown noise also contains all the frequencies like white noise, but the volume of individual pitches decreases by 6 decibels with each higher octave. However, this definition is not always adhered to, and the term brown noise sometimes just refers to low pitch noise. This makes it sound even more like a subdued rumble. Violet noise is the opposite of brown noise, meaning it increases by 6 decibels with each higher octave. The opposite of white noise is black noise, which means there are no frequencies. Yeah, this has gotten a bit silly, hasn't it? The idea is that each color noise has an analogy with each color on the spectrum of visible light, so black noise is essentially the absence of light, or in this case, the absence of sound. There have been several studies done on how and if white noise, pink noise, brown noise, etc. helps people fall asleep faster, focus better, relax more, alleviate symptoms of ADHD, alleviate tinnitus, or even help relax those with gambling disorders. Some have claimed it helps them remove thoughts completely, but there isn't enough evidence yet to confidently say colored noises can significantly help with most of these even if the theories behind these noises make sense. It's unclear whether there are properties in the noise itself that leads to better sleep or concentration, or whether the idea behind colored noises is to raise the background noise and have it play constantly so that you don't notice other bothersome noises like the dripping of a faucet or the creaking of floors. Or maybe it's a combination of both. Even if at the end of the day listening to colored noises is simply a placebo, there doesn't seem to be any harm to playing it often as long as you do so at an appropriate volume. It seems there's an interest and industry in creating soothing sounds. So what is 
the most soothing sound? Well, of course, this is very subjective. Some people may find rainstorms relaxing. Even I do to an extent. My dog, on the other hand, is absolutely terrified of storms of any kind and makes sure we know about it. The sound of a loved one's voice may easily win the prize for most soothing sound, but of course, that's a sound that greatly depends on the person. It can't be utilized by the broader population. If we tried to objectively find out, we would probably look for the sound that is the most soothing to the most amount of people. Sounds of nature are overwhelmingly preferred by the population overall. For one, it's the habitat we evolved in, and sounds of wildlife signified resources and safety. As Trevor Cox, a professor of acoustic engineering, explains, when the birds stop singing, you suddenly realize there might be something about which is a threat. According to a survey done in the United Kingdom, 46% of British people said that waves crashing against the shore was their favorite sound followed by birdsong and rainfall. According to a survey done by YouGov America, 59% of Americans found the noise of a rainstorm to be the most relaxing. The pattering of heavy rain may be the most soothing sound experienced by the most amount of people simply because rain is a natural, random sound that is neither grating nor too repetitive, is very consistent, and has been experienced by nearly every human in history. Even when people talk about pink noise or brown slash red noise, they often compare it to aping the patterns of random natural noises such as a waterfall, ocean waves, or rain. So while the answer of what is the most soothing sound for Americans is a rainstorm, and for the British it's the sound of waves, I find it interesting that they all have roughly the same signature, artificially expressed in its most pure form, colored noise. If you want something with a bit more artistry, you can always pause to take a listen to the most relaxing song, at least according to MindLab International. The British ambient band Marconi Union worked with sound therapists to create Weightless, an eight minute dreamlike ambient song that has been said to reduce anxiety by 65%. Now, I personally would also recommend Rhubarb or Stone in Focus by Aphex Twin or Etches by Boards of Canada for some of the most relaxing songs I've ever heard. In case you were wondering what the most unsoothing sounds are, according to this study, the world's worst sound was the sound of someone vomiting, followed by microphone feedback and wailing babies. According to YouGov America, the sound of scratching on a chalkboard was the most irritating, but I don't know if the sound of someone vomiting was an option or not, but they're wrong. That sound is worse. None of this comes as a surprise to me, but that only sparks my curiosity in the wide variety of audio that people can find relaxing. And yes, I'm aware of the whole ASMR scene, but that's been covered a lot, and I consider it a different category of sensations than what this video is about. There is an entertaining smorgasbord of soundscapes people have crafted online that includes nearly anything and everything including fan noises, the sound of a hairdryer, vacuum cleaner sounds, exterior refrigerator ambience, interior refrigerator ambience, lawnmower sounds, chainsaw sounds. Rule of thumb, if it has a motor, someone somewhere finds the sound of it relaxing. The sound of someone falling, being inside a submarine. Arg, pirate ship sound ambience, wooden sailboat ocean waves, sleep sound eight hours. Microwave noises, airplane noises, oil rig in the ocean ambience, and of course, distant train horn noises. The sound of a train horn is one of the more unique sleeping sounds. For one, it's very different from sounds of nature. Most people find them quite irritating at close distances, and it's a lot more sporadic than white noise or the constant hum of a motor. Train engineers must sound train horns at least 15 seconds before all public grade crossings. This sound is a standardized pattern of two long, one short, and one long blasts. This pattern is then repeated until the train occupies the crossing. So if you ever hear a train in the distance, you will be able to recognize this pattern. The more musically pleasing horns are multi-chime horns, which can play chords. The most used train horns come from the Nathan K series, with the Nathan K5LA being one of the most popular, which plays a B major 6th chord. Chances are, if you hear a train horn in North America, 
it's a Nathan. It's fascinating discovering so much information behind a background sound I've heard for practically my entire life. Even more so when you realize there are yet again people out there that share your extremely niche interest. What makes a sound soothing is also dependent on what we associate with those sounds. Being outside when it's raining heavily is not very fun. It's a lot cozier when you know you're in a stable structure and you're at a comfortable temperature. And when you have this positive experience a couple times, the sound becomes nostalgic. The sound of a train horn in the distance is something I've only noticed well into the night, typically right before bed. I live a few miles from some trains, so I've heard this sound many times before. As a result, I now associate it as the sound of peace after a long day. It's a reminder that there are other people still out there, working and living, and that you are far away from whatever those events are at the moment. Right now, you have no responsibility for the great machine that is civilization. You can rest, and it will carry on just fine. It's the last reminder of other life like yourself, before you slip out of consciousness.